is going on guys we're gonna hit the ground running in this video because there's a lot I want to cover we're talking about advanced tactics using the no land beyond sidearm combination and uh, I'm doing it with the Twilight Garrison on a striker Titan so it's gonna be a little bit more specific in some of the tactics but most of these are gonna be uh, pretty universal now first and foremost what do I mean by competitive because that's what I asked in the last video that I made for this combination uh, is this uh, combination competitive what I mean by that is I'm not talking about the fraction of a percent of players who are in the sweaty community that's not what I'm talking about I'm I'm addressing the other 99 percent of the player base guys who the most competitive thing that they're gonna do is play in the trials of Osiris get high in the card and start getting match made against some tougher opponents some people who are pretty competent players using good teamwork in those scenarios can this combination compete and I say absolutely it can the evidence is in the fact that I managed to rack up four completely flawless runs to the lighthouse over the weekend using this combination from start to finish. Yeah, so one of those runs was with KJ Hovey and the Manigator, but whatever. The other three were carries, and in two of those three carries, I was playing with Holtzman from Planet Destiny, where he as well was using this very combination. So we carried two people to the lighthouse completely flawless, with both of us using the No Land Beyond sidearm combination. So how can you make this work for you? That's the question we're going to address here. So let's start with sidearms. What are they good for? Well, one of the things the sidearms are great at is finishing off primed targets. So if you use a sidearm in combination with your grenades, with your melee, or with uh, NLB body shots, then they can be really effective. So here, what I'm gonna do is I prime with a grenade. Now, that tagged actually all three of these guys. So I'm gonna come to the left, since my teammates are going to the right, we're gonna pinch this guy, and I'm just gonna go one, two with the sidearm and follow up the melee to get the kill, and that's easy peasy. Now in this next play, I'm going to use the sidearm to clean up a kill. I take one guy out, push forward onto his orb to do some orb control, I get a body shot on the skating titan as he's closing the gap quickly, and then quickly switch to the sidearm to finish him off. So using the Titan speed with Titan skating in conjunction with the Twilight Garrison, you see here time and time again, I was able to quickly catch players off guard by closing gaps a lot more quickly than they expected me to be able to. And suddenly they have to react to it, but I've already got shots in them. And this just worked dozens and dozens of times. I had so much fun playing uh, with this setup over the weekend on trials just because of how many times I was able to close these gaps. Look at this. And this guy has no idea. He's, he's already looking at guys... Uh, my teammates who are closer to him. Now let's talk about the No Land Beyond. Now No Land Beyond is best used not in these long sight lines. You don't want to hard scope this center lane. In fact, uh, if you heard us on stream, if you watched any of these streams, Hovi was saying time and time again, man, it's such an awful map for NLB with this middle hard scope. So I compensated for that by starting to use different sight lines entirely. And I'm going to show you that here. So the approaches that I would make, I would come to the middle here, uh, taking a low route to the center, and oh. here's where I would get my hard scope on. See, guys, uh, they they really are hard scoping down that center lane a lot to try and get an early pick. But what I would do, see, I come to the middle, and while they're looking back at my teammates, I can really take advantage of that and get some easy kills on these guys. But the no land beyond, it's really hard to see through those sights at long range. So what you really want to do is take advantage of the fact that you can really get some easy headshots at ranges where most sniper rifles really struggle. See, I'm looking up at these angles, and I'm taking advantage of the fact that this gun, it doesn't sight in very far. But because of that, I can make quick adjustments in close range that I can't do with a regular sniper rifle. And so I'm able to get these close range snipes. So that's what you really want to do. You want to make sure that you're playing within the effective range of the No Land Beyond. Don't try to hard scope and out snipe players at a distance. In general, No Land Beyond is not a great counter sniping weapon. In fact, if your opponents are using their sniper rifles in places where it makes sense for them to do so, then you're not going to get into many sniper rifle battles using the No Land Beyond if you're using it correctly. Now here, this is about the extent of the range of the No Land Beyond. That second snipe there with the guy back in the street, you really don't want to be using it past that range. Now here, another thing that No Land Beyond is good for is you can get some easy quick scopes. So I know exactly where this last guy is. He's in the corner. I just step in, take the quick scope as my teammate is approaching from the other flank, and he's a really easy cleanup kill. Now this clip here is really going to show off the strengths of No Land Beyond. So here I'm a last man standing. I see that they've used a Blade Dancer to wipe the rest of my teammates. I don't know how much of that he has left. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just boost up here into this closer uh, range hallway. And I'm going to bait at least one in. I want to, but I'm going to go ahead and take my super. 
and uh, use it on once. Now it's a 1v2. Now I'm going to do some orb control. I want this guy to jump up and challenge me because No Land Beyond is so good at that range exactly there. If you've got good weapon control and good gun skill, then getting a quick headshot or body shot is really easy to do. I was expecting to have to switch to my secondary, to switch to my sidearm and mop this kill up, but luckily I was able to get the headshot and then drop down and challenge the last guy because my teammates are calling out his position saying he's in special room. And so I can drop down and challenge him and wait for him to peek. And with him, he doesn't have a weapon that can compete quite as well as the, the No Land Beyond in that situation because all I need is one shot. And if he's going to use a one-shot weapon at that range, it's got to be a sniper rifle. And if it's a regular sniper rifle, that's going to be a tough shot to make in close range. So you want to make sure that if you're going to use the No Land Beyond, then you need to play within its effective range. You need to trust your ability. If you've got good gun skill or you want good gun skill, you're going to have to practice this. But get in that closer range, that close to mid-range, and you're going to have to trust your skill to at least get a body shot. And then follow it up, switch to your sidearm, and finish off the kill. And so here you're going to see me making this quick approach as fast as I can as a Titan. We know we're down to the wire and uh, we have to capture the center zone. And look at this, you just the, the uh, weapon handling speed on the sniper rifle is just so good. You can whip it around and get these nice headshots like that. And then now as we're capping the place, I want to step out and uh, challenge this guy. He has to make an approach. So I want to challenge him so that uh, my teammates can safely cap the zone. So I get the body shot, follow it up with some uh, shots from the sidearm to make it work. Here against this guy down low, I'm just going to take the body shot at that angle, and then I'm just going to close the gap. I know he's got a sniper rifle, so I'm trusting my ability to finish him off. Now here, check this out. This is the master perk, and here's what it allows you to do. Look at the timer, where it shows the master perk on the left. Now that means that before that timer runs out, I have the ability to res snipe. And you see that right there. It did enough damage to res snipe. And so um, you keep that in mind. Check, keep an eye on that timer because sometimes you're going to be in these situations where you can actually uh, revive kill the guy that you just killed because there's enough time. If it's you know his first death of the round, then the master is going to be there for long enough that you can uh, actually get that revive snipe uh, before the master expires. Now check this out. This is easily one of my favorite things to do with No Land Beyond. So I'm coming here on the approach. Look at the radar. I know exactly where this guy is. Exactly, perfectly on the opposite side of this wall. So slide, shoulder charge, twilight garrison boost, shade step, whatever, through this doorway so that he misses his initial shot and then has to reorient. I use the third person camera to place him, get a quick body shot, and then follow it up with the melee. So much freaking fun to do. And uh, it looks pretty MLG too. <laughs> So learning to do all of these things in conjunction is going to make uh, playing with this combination a lot of fun. Seriously, so much freaking fun. And uh, man, using the Twilight Garrison with this, I was able to make some pretty fun plays. So here I'm going to use the Garrison to boost over this guy's head. He can't place me with his shotgun. Even though he has a shotgun, I feel confident enough in my ability to disorient him uh, with the boosting, the closing gaps. And then between the uh, sidearm and my melee ability, I can close these gaps and trust my capacity to take these guys out in close range. And, uh, and then check this out, here's a nice series of kills where I'm using everything that I have to my advantage. I drop one guy with NLB, I drop my super, I throw the grenade to zone off this area, make them come over here. And then as they come over here, I can get another NLB kill, get a sidearm kill, and then team fire with a sidearm to get the, uh, the self-reviving warlock down. It's just so much fun. And knowing when to use what weapons takes time. Now, one of the things that people ask me about is why is this any different from a sniper last word combination? And, um, you know, the thing that's different about it is the effective range of this class, the amount of mobility it requires, and also one of the things about the last word is that it's an RNG gun. And sometimes I want to I want to have something that I know is going to consistently be accurate. In the sidearm at close range, can sometimes outplay the last word. Absolutely, it can, because the last word rolls the dice, and sometimes it just decides you know five out of eight shots, six out of eight shots are gonna miss, and that's just not that's not good. I want to be able to consistently rely on something. So here I'm actually going to outgun. A last word in close range in a 1v1 gunfight and I'm using a sidearm. 
So as you learn to use all of these things that you have available to you effectively, I guarantee you this can be very competitive. In fact, we went up against a number of other streamers and even YouTubers who are highly skilled and came out on top this weekend using this combination and almost all of it was on live stream whether it was mine or Holtzman's or Hovey's or Apex Chris's on the the Resolute channel and uh, man we just had so much fun and so here you know you see I prime a guy and then I back off and he's got a shotgun so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw back a little bit outside of shotgun range where my sidearm is still effective bait him in and take him out and then here I'm going to zone them off, punish them for pursuing me with that lightning grenade, and sure enough they do. And then I get a body shot on this guy, sure it's not a headshot, no big deal, here's what we're going to do. Now he's primed, he knows he has to drop back, he has no health, I can get the revise, and now it's going to be a 3 on 2, which is still pretty good. I get another body shot as I get the revive, because I'm clawing the revive so I can still aim and shoot. And I know I, I, I do need to do a clawing video so I can show how I do that and uh, what specifically I do. Check it out, this, this sidearm just mopping up kills right and left. And I'm loving the garrison because I can evade stuff like that, not take all the damage that I should have taken from that grenade. And then here I'm going to get a body shot with No Land Beyond, use the garrison to close the gap and finish the guy off with the sidearm. It's just such a dynamic uh, setup to play. That's what I love about it. It's, it's so not two-dimensional. It's not a flat play style. It's not boring. So if you want to mix things up, you want to have a little fun, you want to make your play style a little bit more dynamic, man, this is such a great setup to use. And uh, for me, for my taste, man, I'm just loving doing it on the Striker Titan. So let me know how your experience goes with this. I would love to hear from you, uh, how it's going for you. A lot of guys ask about my uh, sidearm, by the way. It's got range finder, it's got hand loaded, and partial refund. It's a great roll. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Let me know how this goes for you. We'll catch you in the Crucible.